Following breaking news out of Fountain Hills, where the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office is conducting some sort of an investigation that we're told is connected to a recent string of murders in Phoenix and in Scottsdale. Our sources have just confirmed to Arizona's family that a man and a woman, husband and wife, were found dead inside a Fountain Hills home earlier this morning. This is happening near Kit Fox Place, if you're familiar with the Fountain Hills area. The suspect in these murders is dead. We'll have live reports on how he was tracked down. That's coming up in just a few minutes. But right now, these are shots from our Lions Roofing Chopper over the Fountain Hills neighborhood, where again, a husband and a wife were found dead inside a home this morning. We also have a crew headed on the ground to that home today. We're working to get you some more information on this case. And of course, we will bring the latest to you as soon as we get some answers as to the identity of those new victims. The suspect wanted for several of those for all of those murders in the valley is, as we mentioned, dead today. Police say he shot and killed himself this morning. This was the scene at a hotel near 69th Street and Shea Boulevard. That's where police were attempting to make contact with the suspect who is now linked to more than four murders. The first murder happened Thursday night. That's when high profile forensic psychiatrist Stephen Pitt was killed. The next day, two paralegals, Valeria Sharp and Laura Hernandez, were killed at their law office. Then on Saturday, another man, Marshall Levine, was killed. Again, police say all of these are connected. We do have team coverage for you this afternoon. CBS 5's Cameron Riddle and Javier Soto both following the story for us. We begin with Javier. Yeah, and this, of course, incredible news coming out of Fountain Hills. This now connecting this individual suspect to at least six Valley murders here. Well, according to police, this has all come to an end, ending right here at the Extended State America in Scottsdale. Now, according to Phoenix Police, they got some credible information that led them to this location, believing that the suspect had been staying at the Extended State America. Now, they say after uh, Friday morning's murder, connecting three to the same individual. That's when Scottsdale police and Phoenix police got together and they decided to use their investigative resources to try to hurry up and get this individual locked up and behind bars and off the streets before he could harm anyone else. Now, according to uh, Phoenix police, they got some information that led them here earlier this morning. They say that as they had already uh, surrounded the extended stay of America and were actually evacuating guests as a precaution to make sure that they were safe. That's when they heard a couple different shots come from that suspect's room. Now, no officers had fired any weapons. The good news is no officers were harmed. After they used a drone to make entry into that room, that's when they discovered and then came in with the SWAT team to discover that suspect had been killed, uh, believed to be from a self-inflicted wound. Now, uh, as of right now, that's when they evacuated those guests. Uh, they are still trying to situate the entire situation. Now, at the time, they told us that they believed there were only four murders, but as you just mentioned, they are now connected, uh, connecting two other individual murders to this uh, individual suspect. We're going to have another news conference at 3 o'clock this afternoon at Scottsdale Police. We will, of course, bring, their, bring you there and bring you the latest on this investigation. Back to you. Javier, thank you. Let's go now to Cameron Riddle, who talked to a man who was staying at that hotel and was there as police were arriving. Cameron, that must have been quite a scene for him. Yeah, he had an up close and personal view to uh, this morning's chaos. He actually didn't have the rudest awakening of the people who were at this hotel. You can see from where we are, investigators are still putting the pieces together of this morning's uh, uh, ending of what we at least what we thought was the end of the saga. But now with the two more deaths there in Fountain Hills, we've learned that there are some more. I just want to point out where the police are standing is where uh, the suspect's car had been parked there um, earlier today, but uh, they had just moved it away just a few minutes ago. The person we talked to, his room was immediately behind the suspect's car inside that hotel. He said for some of his friends that were at the hotel, they were woke up by loud bangs on the door telling them to get out of the building and run because there was a police situation. But for him, he woke up when he heard lots of police starting to form outside of his window.
Pretty much I woke up at about 7 o'clock this morning. I looked out my window and I saw SWAT team and all kinds of police officers and everything. Pretty much knew something bad had happened so I, uh, I walked out of my hotel room, I walked outside and the whole building was just surrounded. Uh, all kinds of law enforcement from all kinds of agencies. Um, pretty much from there I came over here and I've been waiting here for hours. They just let me back inside of the uh, my hotel room and my hotel room is actually right where he had parked outside. So if you look out my window there's his car and it looks like they did some kind of controlled uh, explosion on the vehicle. And because of this investigation, Brian tells us he's not allowed to go back to his hotel room. So now he's trying to find another place to stay. He was only staying here because he's actually moving to a new home here in Scottsdale. He is from here, but he says he's not sure if he'll stay here again because uh, he just doesn't know uh, if he had ever walked past that guy. Of course, now it's running through his mind. Did he and today's suspect ever cross paths? He says he's got a couple people that he thinks uh, he could be it, but it's just uh, a lot of eeriness right now and a lot of uncertainty for something that was extremely close to him in the last place that he would have thought that he would have seen anything like this this morning, literally right outside of his bedroom window. We're live in Scottsdale this morning. I'm Cameron Ronald, Arizona's family.